Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna explain everything about this diesel injector unit, which is used on Volkswagen and Audi on different models. So first of all, I'm gonna start by uh, taking the camera on the engine to show you the location of this injector and how we can take it off the engine. And then I will explain some really important points regarding the injector itself, fuel pump and supply or return lines. Then I will get back here to explain everything about the injector itself, the internal structure, and how this injector works for pre-injection and for the main injection. So before starting the video, if you guys haven't subscribed the channel yet, please make sure to have a look at the channel. We have so many diagnostic videos. Right, let's start by having a look at this engine. We're going to find all the components. Then we will remove one injector to see how this injector is going to work. This is the fuel pump. This one is actually a tandem pump. Because as you see on the screen, on this one, we have the fuel pump right here, and this is the vacuum pump. So this one is not actually a high pressure pump. This one is going to just provide the fuel to the injectors, and injectors are supposed to increase the pressure for actually that pressure that we need for a diesel engine. So this fuel pump is actually a blocking vein cell pump. So as you see on the screen again, the blocking veins are pressed against the pump rotor by spring pressure, and of course, this design enables the fuel pump to deliver the fuel even at low engine speed. So this fuel pump is driven by the camshaft. So if I take this one out, you see a coupling over here, which is driven by the camshaft. So when this one operates, it's going to pump the fuel toward the injectors. But as you see, there is no fuel rail. Everything is built in. So the fuel supply line is integrated with the cylinder head itself and it distributes the fuel evenly to the injectors at a uniform temperature, which is really important. And as you see on the injectors, injectors are camshaft operated as well. I removed some of these to take them out right now uh, to make the video fast. So I have the injectors right there. And as you see on the camshaft, this is the camshaft. On the camshaft, we have some extra cam lobs for operating the injectors. So between the camshaft and the injectors, we have these rocker arms. So rocker arms are gonna sit just right there. So when engine is running, these rocker arms are gonna push the injectors piston down that I'm gonna explain shortly after this section. So if I go for removing one injector, as you see, injectors are seated on the cylinder head exactly fit this stopper. So I have removed it from there after removing the rocker arms. So for this injector, there's one connector. We need to take the connector out and just carefully take the injector out. So this is actually our injector unit that I'm going to explain how it works. But before that, if you have a look at the injector, you see there is no uh, connection to the supply line or to the return line. If you look at the cylinder head, fuel rail just comes over here and inside the injector hole as you see there are two small holes if you can see down there there are two holes one of them is actually the supply line the other one is the return line so it means the built-in supply line brings the fuel over here and it can get into the injector and the top one is actually the return line so as long as we don't see any direct fuel connection on the injector i'm going to explain how fuel gets into the injector how injector forks and uh, how fuel gets back to the return line. All right, guys, we are back. So you already know how to remove this injector. I already explained about the extra cams on the camshaft, which are used to drive this piston over here because there is a piston on the injector itself. Let's just start explaining about the injector and some really, really interesting points about the injector operation. All right, so as you see on the screen, I'm gonna hold the injector right here on this side and you see the information on the left side of the screen. So this is the layout of injector internal structure. So as you see at the very top, we have the pump piston. So at the very center, we have the pump piston, which is spring loaded. So we have the rocker arm at the top. If you remember, I showed you the rocker arm and that extra cam lob on the camshaft, which is responsible to pivot the rocker arm and of course for driving this pump piston. This side is actually the solenoid valve. This is the injector solenoid valve, which is controlled by engine control module. And inside, as you see, down here we have the injector needle, but we have a couple of other components 
in between that are really, really, really important for the injector operation. And at the very center, somewhere right here, we have the high pressure chamber, which is actually responsible to pressurize the fuel trapped inside the injector, which is going to get sprayed at the very end. You remember that the fuel supply line was integrated into the cylinder head. So you see that on the screen right now. This is actually the fuel supply line which is integrated into the cylinder head, what I showed you earlier on the engine. So that fuel supply line gets the fuel from the fuel pump. Uh, fuel pumps just provide the fuel for the injectors through that fuel supply line. But this pressure is not high enough for the injector to inject a fine fuel into the combustion chamber. So that's why this injector has to increase the pressure in this way that I'm going to explain to you. So I showed you the injector chamber and I showed you a couple of small holes inside the injector chambers which were connected to the supply and return line. But it's really important to find the fuel supply and return connections on the injector before starting to talk about it. On this injector that I have here, as you see, this one is actually the high pressure connection. This one is actually the fuel supply. And at the very top, we have one connection for the return line. But on this injector that we are going to explain today, there is no connection. So once again, if you look at the internal structure of this injector, you can actually see the fuel return line and fuel supply line. So those ones are actually on the cylinder head which are providing the fuel to the injector but for finding them right here this is exactly where fuel return line gets back from the injector to go to the fuel return line so this is designed for the fuel return line but where is the fuel supply line so as you see on the photo on the left you see on the fuel supply line there are some really really tiny holes but for finding them on the injector if i zoom this one a little if i bring this one so close to the camera you see actually these tiny holes just all around the injector like this this is actually how fuel supply gets to the injector so fuel from these fine and small holes gets into the injector the rest is actually the responsibility of the piston and the solenoid to uh, perform the injection all right let's move on so we're going to start by having a look at the injection cycle because on this injection we have a pre-injection and main injection so i'm going to explain both of them to see how these two works uh, what you see on the screen right now is actually the process for filling the high pressure chamber that you see just under the solenoid so during the filling phase the pump piston moves upward as you see the pump piston is moving upward because a pump piston is spring loaded so when injection cam that cam lob on the camshaft is rotating when it's giving room to the rocker arm to get back of course the piston which is a spring loaded is going to move up so as a result this increases the volume of the high pressure chamber please remember in this case injector solenoid valve is not activated so in this case high pressure chamber is connected to the fuel supply line so fuel pressure from the supply line causes the fuel to flow into the high pressure chamber so this causes the fuel to get into the high pressure chamber and everything is ready to start the pre-injection so on the pre-injection the injection cam pushes the pump piston downwards the rocker arm is located at the top injection cam is going to pivot the rocker arm downward so the pump piston is going to go downward so this displaces some of the fuel from the high pressure chamber back into the fuel supply line. This happens if the solenoid is not activated. Right at this time, ECM activates the solenoid valve. So when the solenoid valve is activated, its needle is pressed against the valve seat and it closes the path from the high pressure chamber to the fuel supply line. So it means the fuel inside the high pressure chamber cannot get back into the fuel supply line. It's going to get trapped over there. So this initiates a pressure built up in the high pressure chamber, which is going to go as high as 180 bar, which is of course greater than the injector's needle spring. So this pressure will cause us a force to lift the injector needle and the pre-injection will start. But pre-injection is very short. Normally pre-injection phase ends immediately after the injector needle opens. But how that happens? Just right here inside, as you see on the photo on the left side, the rising pressure causes the retracting piston because there is a retracting piston inside 
This rising pressure causes the retracting piston to move downward. So as a result, the volume of high pressure chamber will increase. So when this volume is increased, it's gonna cause a pressure drop. So this pressure drop over here will end up to closing the injector needle. So this is how pre-injection will end. But of course, when that retracting piston moves downward, is going to add some load on the injector needle and a spring so the next time that we want to open the injector needle we have to provide higher pressure over here but don't forget that in the meantime when all these things were happening like the pre-injection starting or ending this piston was moving downward because cam was rotating all right so right now that pre-injection has ended it's time for the main injection what we have right here on the main injection, the pressure in the high pressure chamber rises again shortly after the injector needle closes. So solenoid valve is still closed. So the pump piston keeps moving downward. And as soon as we reach to a pressure around 300 bar, that pressure is high enough to open the injector needle and the main injection start, which is going to inject the main quantity of the fuel inside the combustion chamber. The, but this pressure keeps rising and is going to reach to something like around 1800 bar, which is, of course, a really, really high pressure. In all these cases, still we had the injector solenoid valve activated because this solenoid valve should cut the connection between the high pressure chamber and the fuel supply line. But when main injection is reaching to the end, for ending the main injection, the only thing we need to do or the only thing ECM needs to do is actually stop activating this solenoid valve. So as you see on the screen, when solenoid valve, it's not activated anymore. Fuel from the high pressure chamber can get back into the fuel supply line. So fuel is not gonna get trapped over there anymore. So that's why the fuel pressure will drop. So as a result, injector needle will get back into the place. This is how main injection phase ends. So as you see, this injector is way more complicated than the other diesel injectors. So that's why I made this video because I received some comment from you guys asking for making a video about uh, this injector. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to visit the channel page for more diagnostic videos.